Welcome to Application Analysis for Word Documents with your host, me, Joseph J. White. In this tutorial, we will be covering the following topics. 1. Fraud and Forgery 2. Income Documentation 3. Property Documentation 4. Other Documentation and 5. Insurance Documentation Once you've completed the tutorial, it will be time to move on to the interactive quiz. So, let's get started. Introduction A mortgage agent must be able to review each document obtained in a mortgage transaction to determine if there is any potential misrepresentation or fraud. This requires the mortgage agent to be familiar with these documents, understand the information provided in each, and its relevance to the mortgage application and be able to identify inconsistencies in these documents before they are submitted to the appropriate lender. Clearly, it's in the agent's best interest to do such a review. If an application submitted to a lender contains information in the application that is different than in the supporting documentation, the application process will be slowed down significantly and or the application may be declined by the lender. The following sections contain a visual representation of each document so you can recognize the documents as well as analyze each. Fraud and Forgery Unfortunately, documents can be forged and used for fraudulent purposes in the mortgage application process. To help safeguard against submitting forged documents to a lender, the agent must have an understanding of the information contained in each document. With today's technology, individuals wishing to create a forged document can and will. They can use software to manipulate documents provided by employers, the government, or other participants in the mortgage transaction to appear to be valid. Because forgery is more sophisticated in today's marketplace than ever before, it is necessary for the mortgage agent to closely inspect the documents provided by the borrower. While, in the vast majority of cases, borrowers are honest and supply legitimate documentation, it is the dishonest borrower who will cause the greatest harm to a mortgage agent's reputation if that mortgage agent submits forged documentation to a lender that he or she should have known was forged. The following documents are provided as samples of what a mortgage agent can expect to receive, depending on the type of transaction, as well as the types of information that can be expected to be found in these documents. In this section we will begin by learning how to identify borrower documents, followed by an explanation and analysis of them for accuracy and inconsistencies including potential fraud, where applicable. A T4A is a document provided to an individual by his or her employer which summarizes income from various sources and is used by the individual for submitting an annual income tax return. This document is typically obtained by a broker agent when the applicant has commission income, such as a commission salesperson. There are, however, other times that an applicant will receive a T4A. Please refer to the manual for a detailed breakdown of the T4A. Next up is a T4. A T4 is a document provided to an individual by his or her employer to summarize income for a given one-year period. This document is typically obtained by a broker or agent when the applicant has employment income such as salaried or hourly income. Please refer to the manual for a detailed breakdown of the T4. Now let's have a look at a job letter. A job letter is a document provided to an individual by his or her employer. This document is often required by a lender, in addition to other documentation, to verify an applicant's employment as well as income. The following job letter has been provided as a sample. A legend has been provided in your manual to explain each section of the letter. To be acceptable, the job letter should contain all of the information identified in the legend. It is important that a broker agent review the job letter to ensure that it contains all of the necessary information, as well as to confirm that it is authentic. If there are any spelling errors, the broker agent should review the document carefully. If the broker agent has any doubts regarding the authenticity, he or she should verify its contents by ensuring the company exists. Perform a Canada 411 search to verify that the company is listed. If it isn't, the broker agent should contact the borrower for further information. The broker agent can also visit the company's physical address to determine if it is actually there. 
Contacting the employer using the contact information found in the job letter to verify its contents is also a good point of due diligence. Now let's look at the different sections of this job letter to ensure that the information provided is accurate. We'll look at the company letterhead, including the logo if applicable, and contact information. Ensure that this information is correct by verifying it using Canada 411, calling the contact numbers, and or visiting the physical location. The date. The job letter needs to be recent in relation to the application. If the job letter was written before the broker agent took the application, a current pay stub should also be obtained to ensure that the applicant is still employed by this employer. If the job letter is over one month old, the lender may require an up-to-date job letter. The reline. This line may or may not be present depending on the policy of the employer. The two line. If it is addressed to a specific individual, that individual should be the broker agent or lender. If it is addressed to another individual, the broker agent should confirm the identity of that person and the reason for the other name. It may be a job letter that was supplied to another broker agent or lender. The job letter must also contain the applicant's position and if he or she is full-time, part-time, seasonal, temporary, contract, or on probation. Next is the date of employment. The job letter must contain the date that the applicant was first hired. Now we'll look at the income amount. The job letter must contain the amount of annual income earned by the applicant and if it is salary, hourly, or commission-based. Any additional income, such as bonus income, must be listed separately from the salaried income. And finally, writer's information. The writer of the job letter should be clearly identified so that he or she may be contacted to verify the letter's information. Next up is a Notice of Assessment, or an NOA. This is issued by the federal government when a personal tax return has been completed and filed. This document provides a breakdown of the year's income along with the balance owing or refund due. A broker or agent will typically obtain this document when processing an application using a stated income program to provide proof that there are no outstanding back taxes owing to the Canada Revenue Agency. This document may also be required in other circumstances as determined by each lender. In addition to the standard income documents that we've just covered, we also cover a master business license and financial statements in the manual. However, they're not as commonly required as the ones just discussed. Please have a look at them for a detailed explanation of both. Number two, property documentation. A broker agent will be required to submit additional documents to a lender based on the purpose of the mortgage. For example, an MLS and agreement of purchase and sale will most often be required by a lender in a purchase transaction. Please refer to the manual for a detailed look at the MLS and Agreement of Purchase and Sale documents. Section 3, Other Documentation. In addition to the documents we've already discussed, there are several other documents that may be required depending on the type of transaction that you're completing. They include a gift letter, property assessment, mortgage statement, tax bill, condominium status certificate, and a certificate of ILA, or Independent Legal Advice. For more information on these documents, please refer to the course manual. Section 4, Creditor Insurance Documentation. The creditor insurance application is a document used by an insurance company to determine the eligibility of an applicant for creditor insurance. Creditor insurance has become a regular offering in a mortgage transaction. Used to ensure that applicants have protection against the perils associated with death, disability, or job loss, it is important to consider. Failure of the mortgage agent to adequately advise the potential borrower of his or her options to obtain creditor insurance can result in the agent being sued by the borrower if the borrower was not adequately insured and one of the covered perils occurred. To protect both the borrower and the agent, the agent must inform the borrower of the availability of the insurance and, where necessary, complete the appropriate documentation to either waive applying for insurance or to apply for the appropriate insurance please refer to the course manual for a detailed look at a creditor insurance application form. And that brings us to the end of this module. Your next step is to ensure that you read the chapter in your textbook and complete the chapter review questions. 
The answers to those questions are at www.remic.ca.